Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes and welcome. Welcome to my channel. If you like what you hear, put the thumbs up. If you don't like what you hear, put the thumbs down. And if you want to share it with other people, you can subscribe or you can share it and you can talk to my subscribers. They're a friendly bunch. And yes, so here we go. We're talking about Britain. Apparently, their public finances is worse than Gambia, Kenya and Uganda. Can you imagine? And you know what my fear is, is that it's already tits up. The UK is already messed up. But what they want to do is, I reckon, they, they hope that Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn wins so they can blame everything that's going wrong on Labour. I really do believe that just my opinion but if I, I'm going to read this out in a minute so this isn't fabrication but I've just got a funny feeling that that is how they're going to play it they know that they've cocked up they know the finances is down the pan and so what better scapegoat can they use but labor Jeremy Corbyn anyway let me just read it out for you a little bit international monetary fund IMF economists have found that one trillion had been wiped off UK public sector's net wealth since the 2008 financial crisis, largely because of bank bailouts and increasing pension liabilities. The IMF looked at the assets and liabilities of 31 countries and found the UK was in a worse position than every other country apart from Portugal. Isn't that scary? Rather than looking at each country's debt and deficit, a government's income minus its expenditure, the IMF approach takes into account the benefit of assets such as publicly owned corporations and natural resources. These figures more closely resemble a company's balance sheet. The IMF said the cost of bailing out banks had been significant factor dragging the UK down the rankings. The UK also has one of the largest pension liabilities of any nation in the study, but is toward the bottom of the pile when it comes to public assets, because they've sold them all off to foreigners. Using the public sector balance sheet method, countries such as Gambia, Uganda and Kenya rank above the UK because while they have smaller assets and liabilities than Britain, they have a higher net wealth relative to the GDP. Now, what do you think about that, folks? UK economy lost out on 4.5 trillion because of too much finance. In the 30 years following Margaret Thatcher's deregulation of the city in the mid-1980s financial workers were overpaid by around 280 billion pounds overpaid by 280 billion pounds let that register when compared to people of a similar educational background in other jobs, according to the research. Meanwhile, financial services firms reaped an estimated 400 billion in excess profits. That's 400 billion pounds in excess profits. These booming profits and salaries pushed up the relative value of the UK's currency, making manufactured goods and agricultural products more expensive to overseas buyers. UK productivity has fallen dramatically behind most EU member states and excess household and corporate debt is holding back growth. Remaining in the EU for UK economy than any kind of Brexit, says IMF. Let me repeat that. Into, this is from the International Monetary Fund. Remaining in the EU is better for UK economy than any kind of Brexit. In its Article 4 report, the IMF did not provide any specific estimate of the damage of a no-deal Brexit. And Ms Lagarde, 
would not be drawn on the question of whether it would, could result in a recession. But the IMF said that it would result in a significantly worse outcome for the UK economy than its current forecast of 1.5% growth in 2019, which it predicated, which is predicated on an orderly exit and a transition period where the UK effectively remains in the customs union and single market. The UK has undergone one of the most drastic privatizations of any econo of any economy since the early 1980s. Under the Conservative government since 2015, policy has gone a stage further in sensitizing departments and local authorities to sell off assets to fund day-to-day -day spending under the premise that such an approach is necessary to cut the deficit. But the IMF economists said the tendency of governments to focus on debt misses large swathes of government activity and can fall victim to illusory fiscal practices. I feel as though I'm tongue-tied here. The IMF also warned that Brexit is among the primary risks to global economy stability. The IMF also warned that Brexit is among the primary risks to global economic stability. When public assets are taken into account, selling a public utility, for example, may do nothing to improve the public finances, the IMF said, and you know that they've sold them off. For instance, privatisations increase revenue and lower deficits, but also reduce the government's assets holdings, concluded Professor Andrew Baker, co-author of the report and professional fellow at the University of Sheffield, the Sheffield Political Economy Research Institute. It warned that concerns about a no-deal Brexit appear to have increased driving volatility in the pound and suppressing company valuations. The IMF pointed to growing anxiety that Brexit negotiations could break down increasingly, increasing uncertainty in the UK and beyond, potentially triggering a sharp tightening of global financial conditions. So, I'll put that link in when I find it. And there you have it, folks. Can you imagine? Big, big UK. Worse off than Gambia, Uganda and Kenya. Well, well, well.